if we have a function f from two sets, let's say s and t, there's something called the factor set of s determined by f. What is that? So let's consider a relation. I'm going to say x is equivalent to y if f of x is equal to f of y. This is in language of relations, but in layman's terms, let's say that two numbers or two, two things are the same if after we apply f, we get the same output. So two inputs are the same if they correspond to the same output. And then we can say that this is actually an equivalence relationship because we can sat it satisfies its reflexive, right? X is equivalent to X because, um, well, F of X is, of course, equal to itself. If X is equivalent to Y, then F of X is equal to f of y, but equality is symmetric, so that means that f of y is equal to f of x, and so this um, relation here is symmetric. And lastly, if x is equivalent to y and y is equivalent to z, then we have f of x is equal to f of y, but here we say this is f of z, and so f of x is equal to f of z, blah, 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 blah. We get that x is equivalent to z. Long story short, this is a nice way, this definition of two elements being the same, if they have the same output, is a nice way of saying that two elements are equivalent. So what what was a factor set? Well, given this equivalence relation, we can actually define all the equivalence classes, or those I'll do, I'll quickly write down that definition. We say that the equivalence classes of this equivalence relation, say like X tilde, this is the set of all Y and S, your domain, such that F of Y is equal to f of x. So the, this is the set of all inputs that also get mapped to the same thing as x. And so we can split up the domain into all the elements that have the same range. And actually, we, we denote this usually with equivalence relations. We say that um, all the equivalence classes combined is s quotient tilde, or I think, I think it's usually said x mod tilde, but here we can just say x mod f. This is defined to be the set. We take, um, excuse me, we have, these are the equivalence classes in our domain um, such that x is in the domain. So I, I think it's easier to see uh, if we use an example. I, I, I stole this off the web. This is kind of something you'd see when you first learn about functions. It's a very abstract image here. F maps these shapes in the domain S to numbers in the domain T. We can partition or split up S into its factor set. We can take S and create S mod F by dividing up, hence the, the division notation uh, here, by dividing up the domain into elements that get mapped to the same thing. So for example, this triangle up here, this top one is mapped to three, but also this other uh, triangle right down here is mapped to three. So these become the same thing in the factor set. Similarly, these two shapes are mapped to the same output. So in the factor set, we just say that these things are the same. We just group these together since this this uh, pentagon, I, I had to think about that, one, two, three, five, uh, it's a pentagon, okay. Since this pentagon gets mapped to five, there's nothing equivalent to it because there's nothing also mapped to five. So in the factor set, this pentagon is alone. It's considered its own thing. And then this seven-sided shape gets mapped to seven. Nothing else is mapped to seven. So these four blobs that I've drawn here, this 
thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing are all unique elements of the factor set. If I call this first blob A, second blob B, and then I keep going C and D, then in this case, X mod F would be literally the, the, the collections A, B, C, and D.